My name's Rich. Um, graduated in 2010, and I started Austin Capper Austin with my wife well, probably 10 years ago. Um, but it wasn't my full-time employment, um, so I've just now I do this full-time as of uh, about a year ago. Um, so it, handy that I have this project to launch into my practice with. So I'd first like to acknowledge the land on which the project's situated, and it's the land of the Yorta Yorta people in Northeast Victoria, in Benella or Gurmet. So actually, I started this project when I was 27, so I would have been two years out of university, and uh, I'd just gotten registered, and uh, it's actually for my, my parents, and my father was the owner-builder, so it was uh, uh, a lot of trust, I guess, and it, it was actually it was, it was great in the end, in terms of uh, the bond my dad and I formed over it, because he built it. Um, that's him on the, the right there. And uh, that's um, Avalon Homestead, which is in Geelong, and he grew up there. And, jeez, uh, didn't surprise me emotion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, it means a lot to all of us, but we were trying to recreate a modern interpretation of, of the traditional homestead. And you can see we, we uh, did things like, um, we've got the carport there, which is similar to that carport. But with this project, we tried to really connect with the landscape. So when you're in it, you feel that connection there. Um, whereas in, in the traditional homestead, it was more of a castle. It was quite introverted and a bit more dark. Still grand and nice and everything, but different. Um, so the, the core ideas, were the walled garden, climate responsive design, off-grid, siting and context. And these emerged through our initial conversations. And um, they gave me quite a detailed brief initially. And, and these were, I guess, the, the core considerations that were quite critical. Um, the energy resilience was, was a big thing, because this is the house they were going to retire in. So they didn't want to be subjected to price increases, and they just want to be able to control their outgoings, uh, and also low maintenance. Um, and then the climate as well, it was, it was hot northerly winds and cold southerly winds, so that this courtyard here to create a microclimate, um, which also goes back to where um, the clients, my parents met in um, Andalusia, in southern Spain and northern Africa, and that's where they, they first experienced that idea as well, the microclimate and water. Um, they also, uh, in retirement, uh, my mother wants to start a bakery, which, which is currently being fitted out in, in the shed. And uh, that's offering sort of hospitality on the back of the silo art trail, um, of which Gurumbat has these uh, large murals here. This is, this is from an exhibition at Fed Square, where Jimmy DeVat had his uh, mini models displayed. So those are the silos there, and this is the project. That's the shed. And then the house, so it's set up on a town axis and a solar axis. So the, the initially getting going was had a few false starts. Like how do you start? Where do you put it in a big paddock, which is relatively flat? And there's a big tree down here, which you see frequently. And then we've got the silos, of course, and the dam. And then in the end, I came back to that concept, like when they, the Romans established a soldier town, with the, they just did the two axes, north, south, east, west had the crossroads in the middle and then just worked out from there. So I did a, did a similar thing here, um, the solar axis and the town axis. And then the form of the building is just sliced by the town axis. The actual form itself was really driven by uh, collecting water. So it's fully off-grid, this house. So And really wa water, more importantly than energy, was a big driving factor in the design because energy can just they have the space to add more photovoltaics, more batteries, things like that. They've got a wood boiler for hot water and lots of wood. So it's really the water that's the most precious thing there. So there's over half a million liters in these eight tanks. Um, plus now there's another tank here and then the dams. And those tanks could really dominate the design. Um, so that really drove, what do you do with that much water? Those tanks, do you just put them to one side or do you make it a real part of the design? So put one on each corner, and then you have the rectangle, and then I thought, well, geez, it'd be nice if we didn't have to have downpipes and plumbing and maintenance, and so how do you get not out of a downpipe? So you put a rake in the gutter, so it just got the square, and you pinch it in the middle, and you get the bow tie, and you have the natural rake. 
and then uh, and then just articulate that with with structural expression to the ribs. Um, yeah, so you can see there the outline of the roof, and uh, and then the the programming is pr pretty much the functional brief that we got from the from the client there. Three bedrooms, uh, master with an ensuite, and two identical bedrooms, and then. Uh, large living area, so views to the south here to Mount Bullock, and then views into the private courtyard, which provides some privacy from there's some houses up here as well. And yeah, you can see the solar array there. There's one on this roof, and then this is for the, the swimming pool here, with hot water. And then in the interiors, it was just trying to keep it simple and um, just really express the rammed earth where we could, uh, a clean modern kitchen. Uh, and just a, a clean, crisp interior um, with uh, views out into the internal courtyard and the lap pool, uh, which is 20 meters long, so which is, again, part of that uh, retirement dream, I guess, but it's also a bit of an oasis. So especially there in the summer when you get successive days of 40 degrees, it's, uh, it's incredible. Like, you could be 40 degrees outside and it's quite pleasant there. Uh, and then openable roof section for being outside, this is north. Uh, and that little gap there, when you're at the front entrance, you, you see right through the whole house, just down straight out to the west, and then you can get some great sunsets as well. And at the time, um, the firm I was working at, I worked with uh, the similar consultant team at the time, so consulting, Don Kerr, some of you might have worked with him before, um, he's no longer alive, but, and his company's been bought, but it was great working with him and another young engineer at the time. Uh, it was a lot of fun. This is the early sketch I did of the, the gutter concept and working that out. Uh, we went with a structural steel frame because my father could erect it relatively easily and it was also a way of me ensuring that he didn't try and change the roof form or the design because he couldn't because it was already it was a kid of arts. So. But he, uh, he actually came up with his own formwork system um, and so all, the whole house is built with just this, this pile of formwork here, which he just made out of 50 by 150 uh, RHS. And he came up with this ingenious idea to deal with all the acute angles. Um, he, just, he just simply sliced down the inside of uh, this RHS here, and then he could just bend the corner section to get any angle he wanted. It's a really elegant, cheap way to do something that looks pretty complicated. Um, and then the rammed earth comes from about 30 minutes away. Uh, with only 6% cement. So by them building it and with rammed earth, um, the bill costed approximately half what it's recently been valued at. 